Hello everyone, welcome to one more podcast for the Athletic School Podcast. Today we have the, the coaching staff for Lourdes University Basketball, coaches Dennis Hobson and, and Jake Dupree. Uh, so thank you guys to, for being here, for joining us. Um, so, I mean, we, we decided to bring you guys here because you guys changed the basketball here at Lourdes and we saw the good results. We heard good things about you guys and we wanted to know more about your story and, and how it was like, uh, you know, as a player, how it was as a coach and how, how you guys are doing right now. Um, like Coach Dennis played in NBA for five years, right? You played in Ohio State, was our American. Coach Jake was here since the basketball you started here at Lourdes. You also had many awards, went to the Nationals. So, I mean, thanks so much for being here. Uh, my first question for you guys, um, what is the biggest lesson that you guys had as a, as a player and as a coach? Not only as a basketball player, but also as a, as a person, as a human being. So, what I cool wants to start. Uh, I think the biggest uh, lesson that I learned as a player was uh, always compete, you know, uh, never stop competing. You never know what the what the end result will be, mm -hmm. uh, so you never want to stop stop repeating. And then I think the other thing is is, is take advantage of the opportunities that you get, right. uh, because as kids you don't understand that these opportunities they will they they dwindle as you get older they dwindle they start to go away. So you take advantage of what you have and make the most of what you have, mm -hmm. and then whatever result you get out of that you make adjustments. If it's a good, if it's a good result, you keep doing what you're doing, and you try to continue to get better. If you're getting bad results, you kind of regroup and you try to figure things out so you can correct what's not going right. So for me as a player, uh, I think that was the biggest thing. You know, I'll always go for it and uh, understand your opportunities and take full advantage of the opportunities that you get. So you think like you, since you were young, you were already like seeing the opportunities, or do you think? Once you get older, it's easier to like see the opportunities and don't waste. Or you, you think since you were young, you were already like looking for opportunities. And when, when, I, when, I, when I was young, I didn't understand what opportunity was. Yeah. You know, but I had a lot of older people to try to explain it to me. Now again, that's just something that comes with maturity. Um, so I didn't understand what what, what uh, opportunity was. But I think what kind of separated me from everybody else was. I could pretty much do anything that I put my mind to. You know, if that was working on a, a mini bike or if that was uh, throwing a football and I didn't have no desire to play football, if that was going out playing basketball and not working on my craft, I could always, I was always able to figure things out a lot quicker than what the normal kid could do. So that's what helped me move by. But as time went on, then I understood what opportunities were and again, understood how to take advantage of what was presented to me. Yeah, so for, for me, mine are kind of both very similar in the fact that when I was a player, the coach that I, the coach that I played for a while, that more time, Rick Smith, he would always reiterate how important it was to, and Coach Hopson actually talks about this a lot, use the game for, for what it is, you know. Um, so for me, it was more use the game of basketball to become a better person, to give back, you know, what I can. Okay, so so basically use basketball to how do I say be prepared for life yeah. when the when when the ball is out of bounds. You know, so when you're a player it's about how do I how do I use this use basketball to uh, make life better for me and then when you're a coach it kinda amplifies because it's not just about you. Now it's how do I make life better for my players? How do I make life better for the students around me, the people around me? Um, so I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned, both as a player and then as a coach. And then as a coach, it's much more important because, like I said, it's not about you anymore. Because I think Coach Hopson will attest to this too. We're not doing our jobs if these guys have no idea about life skills or they get into the real world and they have no idea how to function or anything like that. Because um, our job is, as coaches is not always to just win basketball games and win championships, but we need to be, be sure that these guys are prepared for life after that. Those, those for me were the two biggest lessons as a player. Yeah, for sure. And I think if we look at the the coaches that they are, the most successful coaches, 
they made a difference not only in sports but also in, in, in their lives and the lives of their athletes. So I think that's what the, the powerful thing about, about sports because they, they change the athlete but they change the, that person as well, right? Yeah. Just adding something that you said because you maybe remember about a coach of mine. He said that you gotta use volleyball in my case like to to grow, not because I wanted to be like the best leader in the world and then I wasn't like thinking about relationships and kind of stuff Absolutely. and he was like no we got to use volleyball to grow like as a person as prof as a professional like professionally and to get a, maybe a school or something scholarships things like that because we spend so many time like playing and the sport also can give you something can make you grow and that's something very nice to share yeah, no, absolutely i mean the game, the game for us the game of basketball is it, you know the same for volleyball the same for soccer yeah. you know what i'm saying it's it, it involves so many life skills you know it involves mm -hmm. being disciplined you know being accountable for yourself holding others accountable it involves teamwork collaborating and working with other people to get the job done um, so that stuff if you if you take it to heart while you're a player you, it's just going to carry with you when you get into to real life, you know, it's going to make your life a lot easier <coughs> if you approach the game the same way because mental toughness and, and your mentality, you know, after everything, during and after everything is super important. If you don't have the right mindset, you're not going to be able to use the game in the right way. And, it, and it's going to affect you negatively when you get into the, to, to the real world. Yeah. Yeah. How would you guys like try to pull things like, let's say a player, he gives everything the court like in his personal life, he's kind of careless about homework, about everything else. How do you convince him like to be both, like to, to be good at both? Who is this? No, no just, just to have a key in general. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, again, I, I, think approach that, them. I, I think that again, they have to understand why they're here. You're a student athlete, not athlete student. You're a student athlete first. And then I always use the thing uh, scenario um, in regards to either we're going to help you as a coach's staff or life is going to help you. And most of the time, when you let life help you, that's when you start getting in major, major trouble or have major problems, okay? So the people that's around you, they really care and love about you. When you step outside in, in this thing called the real world, they don't care about you. So hopefully you're gonna learn enough. So we try to use different things to get them to understand why you're here, okay? And then if you leave here and you're able to be a professional athlete, now it becomes a job, okay? So you. If you want to put school on the back, right? If you don't want to, whatever, you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Just understand that this is a job if you, if you become a professional athlete. So it's two totally different things. But while you're here, understand your reasoning and your purpose for being here. And that's to get a degree. And that's what it's all about because you just touched on it. It's not about the game, it's what the game, well, everybody just touched on it. It's not about the game, it's what the game can do for you. Okay? The basketball divorced me. The basketball divorced him. You still play volleyball? Yes. Okay, and you still married to the volleyball, but eventually that volleyball is going to divorce you as well. Okay, you're not going to stay married to the sport forever. Okay, LeBron, I look at Michael Jordan. I play with Michael Jordan. He's the best to ever do it. He don't play basketball anymore. Okay, LeBron James will get to that point eventually. It's what it is. So use it for what it is, okay? But at the end of the day, understand your situation. If you're a student athlete, books first, basketball, whatever your sport set. It's just simple, and that's something that, like he said, something that we have to get across to, to, to guys, okay, because uh, that's where you hear. That's what that's the important thing. And, it, and again, I can ride down the street now, and sometimes my mind will just think about my college degree, okay? That's something that can never ever be taken away from you. This game is going to lead you sooner or later. I don't care how good you are, it's going to lead you sooner or later. And you have to understand that. It's tough to accept. But That's right, but you have to do it. It's what it is. It's what it is. It's not just you, but it's left a whole lot of other people. So don't feel bad when it leaves you. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and Coach Jake, uh, I saw that your first season here was you were a redshirt. Yep. And by the end of your third and fourth season, you were the captain. Mm -hmm. So how, how was that? How how's that worked? Why you were a redshirt and how you became a, a captain? So the reason why I read shirt, which is really important for you know kids coming up, and when we have kids on campus, this is, this is part of my story that I tell. Um, coming out of high school, you know, with NAI and NCAA, you have to meet certain requirements as far as academically. And coaches touched on why why being a student first is so important. 
Uh, I didn't I didn't really know those requirements. I wasn't really aware. Not a, a lot of people in my family went to college to go play a sport. So in high school, I just did the bare minimum to stay eligible and, and play sports. So it's not it wasn't that I couldn't do the work. I just didn't really apply myself like I should have. And when it came around to when I made my college decision to come aboard, you know, my head coach sat me down and was like, you know, you didn't meet two of the three criteria, so you have to sit out a year. And that absolutely crushed me because I had never ever sat out a season uh, for sports, especially basketball, a day in my life. So that was kind of a reality check for me to be like, hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta kick it in here. This could never happen again. Uh, so that's the reason why I actually had the red shirt. And honestly, it was probably the best thing for me because coming in, you know, to this situation, you know, I was good in high school, but you know, going to the college level, that's a whole different, that's a whole different scenery. It's a whole different level of talent. Uh, there's uh, big age gaps and everything like that. So me sitting out that year was probably the best thing for me for my career because I'll be honest, I just wasn't, I wasn't ready. You know, as a, as a player, as a person, my mentality, I, I just wasn't ready to, to play at all. So, uh, but as far as, you know, being a red shirt and then by my junior year being a captain, I'll be honest, I don't think it was like something that I really set out to do. It was just something that kind of happened. And it wasn't just me, it was a lot of older guys that took me under my wing, took me under their wing, especially my red shirt year and then my freshman year. Those guys, those older guys, they just, they guided me in the right direction. Um, they were there for me, even, you know, they were real tough on me, you know what I'm saying? When Coach Hobson's talking about competing every day, that's something that they taught me how to do. Um, so when they, when they would, you know, beat up on me, take the ball from me and everything like that, and I would look discouraged, they would pick me up, you know? And it's super important when you have guys like that on the team that you know that they care about you as a person, as a player, they want you to get better. So those type of guys I just looked up to, and I just kind of was a sponge and was kind of picking up their leadership qualities and, and looked at little things that they did. And, and for them, I would run through a brick wall for them. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the leaders on our team, they would ask me to do something. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do it to win the game, you know? So just learning from those guys. And then, you know, by the time my junior year came, it was just, I led, I led by example. Uh, I, I worked my tail off. You know, I, I was I was willing to do things, do do any, everything possible to for the success of the team, and I think guys kind of gravita gravitated towards that, and I think the coaching staff seen that. Now a lot of people don't know that I was a walk on, so I think uh, a lot of people, a lot of guys on the team, kind of had a lot of respect for that. You know, saying like, hey, this guy wasn't even getting scholarship, and he's still doing all this stuff. Um, he he's somebody that that I can follow. You know, because he's doing things right on the court, um, and then especially off the court too. Because I think a lot of people get caught up in, oh, he's a really good basketball player, so he's he's the leader of the team, and that's not the case. When you're a leader, you have to lead in all aspects of life. So it's like, yeah, you might be a good basketball player, but if you're not living right off the court, you're not a good leader because you're not setting a good example. So for me, it was doing the right things on the court, doing the right things off the court, and I would have never been able to to really do that, honestly, if it wasn't for the players before me. So it's really a testament to those guys and, and the leaders that they were that evolved me into the leader that I, I eventually ended up being. Yeah, I yeah. And like, you said many things, but like one thing that you said, like it's gotta be open-minded, especially when we're a freshman. Mm -hmm. And I see many things, they come from high school and they were, they were good at high school, maybe the best player of the team. And they come here and they think they already know. And you don't, they're not gonna make it because, like, because they think they're ready. Yeah, they yeah. think they're ready. Oh, and that's something that I think it's it's huge. I don't know if you guys agree, but like as a freshman, if you are if you are coachable, a coachable person, that's like a huge step to to learn. Yeah, and, uh, and you, we think you said about picking up a little bit of everyone that was helping you, you know. And I think that's people talk about knowledge is power, you know. Yeah, if you know how to use that knowledge and if that knowledge is usable for you because, well, as a soccer player, if I learn how to, you know, I don't know, like uh, how to do something in the basketball part, well, that will help me. That's cool that I know, but okay, yeah. and, and what, you know? Right. So, and coach, you, you play with many good guys out there. You went to play in other countries. Um, is there anything that you kind of uh, using your life nowadays that you will learn back then with these guys, Michael Jordan, playing NBA, playing in Europe, 
Is there anything that you use in their life now? Then? I think that the, the, the experience was great. Let me say that, you know, because I had the opportunity to play against, like you just said, uh, great players over here and then great players over there. Um, I think one of the, one of the, or a few, there's a few things that differ from being overseas versus here as, a, as an athlete, right? The first thing back then was the athleticism, okay? Guys over here, they're super, super athletic, okay? Guys over in Europe, they're not as athletic. And then the other thing would be the quickness, okay? So those two things were a little different as far as me being over here versus me being over in Europe. But the different thing over in Europe versus over here is the whole fundamental side of things, okay? So Europeans, and I think we quickly found out this year when you watch the Olympics early on, when the NBA played the, the uh, uh, Olympic teams, those the guys on the NBA side thought that they could just walk out on the floor and dominate these guys. Well, that's not happening, okay? Because at the end of the day, Europeans play the game the right way. Okay, Americans have kind of transitioned away from that, which is sad. And that's why so many Europeans are coming over here taking American jobs, because the game of basketball is never going to change. Okay? The players might be a little different, but at the end of the day, the game is never going to change. And basic fundamentals of basketball is going to take you a lot further than you trying to be a showboat or you trying to do something that's, you know, again, I'm not going to say it's not part of the game, but it's something that's not ordinary. Basic fundamentals is going to take you where you need to go. Okay, so those are the things that differ from one another. But I, I think for me is that whole fundamental side of things. And, and I was around the game when I played the game when fundamentals were still actively involved with the game. Okay, so that's something that's never going to go away from our DNA as coaches here at Moore's University. You know, coach is going to coach the guards. I'm going to coach the bigs. And we, we do 20 minutes of skill work daily. And in those 20 minutes of skill work that we do daily, it's going to be fundamental bat, fundamental, fundamental work. Okay, basic basketball. Okay, guys might get bored with it, and that's okay. That's okay, because at the end of the day, we know exactly what's going to get you over as a player. And that's going to be the fundamental side of the game. So if I picked up on anything when I was over in Europe was, you know, stick with the basics. Stick with the basic. If you had, I was always told if you had a practice and they only gave you 10 minutes to practice, let seven minutes of that practice be skill work. Okay, and then the other three, you can do what you want to do. But seven minutes, if you only had 10 minutes of practice, hey, seven minutes needs to be skill work. Okay, and, 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 and they're right about that. That's how you build a basketball. Okay, so those are, that's what I learned when I was over in Europe, what was important. An interesting that I learned over here uh, when I played over, over here too. Yeah, no, and I was reading Michael Jordan's book and, and he mentioned about that. Because he said, when things are going wrong, just go back to basics, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, especially like, a, I don't know about you guys, sports, but like a, as soccer, they are trying to change so many things mm -hmm. that we are forgetting the basics. Mm -hmm. And that's when we start making mistakes, that's right. you know? So I feel like people forgetting about the basics, but when we see at those players, Michael Jordan, you know, all this, all these guys, Tom Brady, you know, of course they do incredible things that mm -hmm. not everyone can do it, but it's because they dominate the basics mm -hmm. of the, of the right. game, right? right? So I think that's that's huge, that's important, and, and many coaches, they forget about that. Mm -hmm. they, they, don't, they don't do what they said, I mean, it's soft. just the skill, the basic skills, to later, later on do the, do the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, I really like that. Um, and coach, you were you were assistant coach at Bowling Green, right? And so I want to know uh, how and why you decided to come to Lord's uh, NAIA uh, school to be the head coach. Well, what was going on in your mind to well, this school? Well, the, the main reason is, I mean, they got rid of us at Bowling Green. They okay. fired us at Bowling Green. Okay. okay, so as an assistant, I'm either the incoming coach is going to keep the assistants or if he doesn't want us, we have to go. And the incoming head coach didn't want the assistance, so we had to go. And which is fair, that's pretty much how the business works. Now, when I got the phone call about Lord's University, you guys have to understand, 
some people look at Lord University as being small, and it, and it is small, okay, and it's, it's NAI, so I think it's an NAI conference, yeah. Dennis didn't look at it that way. Dennis just looked at an opportunity to coach basketball, something that I love to do, okay? So that's how I got here. I never paid attention. A lot of people might ask, well, why it's such a small school? Because for me, I don't look at the size of the school. I'm looking at the opportunity to coach something that I love to do, and that's, and that's coach basketball, okay? So, hey, and then the other big thing is that I'm at home. I'm, I'm, I'm in my hometown. I, I, get, I get a chance to make a difference in my hometown. And uh, I think we used to, you touched on it earlier. I think myself, Coach Dupree, um, Coach Corden, we're putting together something special here. Okay, not saying that he didn't get an opportunity to experience that, Coach Dupree, he did. But we want to make sure we keep this program at a certain level. Okay, that's what it's all about. And wherever I have to do that, if it's on the AAU side, if it's on the small college side, mid major, high major side, then that's what we want to do. Okay, and I think this year, Coming up, I think he's done a nice job of bringing some great guys in. Now it's up to us, okay, to get this thing, make it, make it authentic. Okay, that's gonna be one of my words now. We need to make it authentic with our with us and with our players. And then take what we have on paper, make sure we transfer that on the basketball court and we can do some damage. So I'm say I say all this to say for me, the school might be small. And I'm okay with the size of it, but at the end of the day, I'm still doing what I love to do, and that's coach basketball. So that's kind of for you too. Like, what what has been like the main changes since you guys start working together? That you guys think you guys are improving, doing a great job, great job, or something that needs to be improved as well? There's something specific that you guys are changing, like the culture or something. Well, the cult, the culture is the big thing because if you don't have culture, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have talent. Uh, you, we can do what we do as coaches, but if the culture is not set and there's no, there's no expectations for the players, for the coaching staff, for the program, you might win games, but you're not going to win any important games. You're not going to win any championships, and, and that's what we want to do as a coaching staff. So, you know, people look at our records, you know, winning 20 games in the first year, you know, winning, you know, 9, 10 games in a COVID, a half of a COVID year and everything like that. Um, we're grateful for those wins, don't get me wrong, but I think I speak for both of us when when I say you know, we, we want to do something that's never been done here as a, you know, as a coaching staff. We want to hang up banners. We want to win championships. We want to make the national tournament consistently. Um, and that's what we look at as success for us, you know, for us and, and the players around us. So um, it's always tough, too, when you have, when you're bringing in a new, uh, a whole, uh, a new coaching staff. You know, I know I've been here, uh, but with Coach Hobbs, Coach Corgans, Coach All, um, they were all new. So I knew, whereas I knew the school, they didn't really know the school that much. So it was basically, you know, me sharing my knowledge with them about, hey, this is what the school is about. This is, you know, whatever the case may be. And then them sharing their knowledge with me on the basketball side, you know what I'm saying? So just like I said, like how I was a sponge, you know, when I was a player, that doesn't change when I'm a coach because since he's been here in the, you know, what feels like a short two years, I've learned so much about basketball that I that I didn't know about basketball, about life. We talk about more than just basketball, you know, when we're when we're in his office. So, um, and, and as far as like you know, what did we change? You know, I don't think we really changed anything. It's just we're building what we want as a program, and, and usually it takes about three three to five years to actually establish a, a culture that that you want, and then take off from there. So, um, and my next question is. Injuries, uh, bad performance. How how to deal with that? Not only how you guys did uh, when you were playing, because I'm pretty sure you guys had bad performance. You got injured in a certain point, but also right now when you guys play bad, what to do? You know, not only talk about the game, but also like uh, about your mentality. You know, what 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 do you, what you think when you when you play bad? Well, what you guys used to do and what you guys do right now? Well, we, we uh, I always have my tennis ball. I have a tennis ball that I come to uh, half court when we talk to our guys before we start practicing. And what we do is, is say we play bad the night before, a couple of nights before we get ready to practice, you know, I'll bounce my tennis ball. And they understand when I bounce my tennis ball, that means it's time for us to bounce back. Okay, we bounce back, we have to be resilient. We can't worry about what happened, okay, and us performing bad. We have to worry about how we can correct that, okay? And I think growth, 
the, the start of growth is not duplicate the same mistakes. All right, so like we do, we'll, we'll, we'll break down film, we do that in our group, we do it first and then we do it with our group and we show things that can't happen, okay? And if they continuously happen, then the growth is not there and then we're gonna continue, continuously get the same results, okay? So at the end of the day, it's not about the loss, it's about building from the loss and moving forward, okay? Because a loss is part of the game, it's a part of, a part of sports. Okay, somebody gonna win, somebody gonna lose. But growth starts with how do you fix what's not going right? Okay, that's when growth starts. So at the end of the day, you know, it, 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 it's, it's kind of it's tough because nobody wants to lose. And uh, we try to make the adjustments so we don't continuously lose, but we bounce back and we learn from what we didn't do right that caused us to lose. We have to bounce back from that, right? And then again, that comes from having that authentic relationship with one another. We show them film, they sit there, they watch it, we point out good and bad things that they've done in the previous game, and hopefully they understand, okay, we can't let it happen, okay? That's the trust that being good requires. They have to trust us, we have to trust them that they understand what we're doing. And if we get that, that, that type of relationship, which I think we will this year, we should have a pretty good team. And did you have that relationship when you were playing? Is, is that something that you learned from your past coaches or is something that you create your own? It's something that I learned from my past coaches. Okay, the whole tennis ball piece, bouncing the tennis ball, that comes from New York. Okay, the whole authentic relationship, family, family type atmosphere, that comes from Roly Massimino, okay? So, like he, like Coach Dupree just said, he's gonna take some stuff from me, okay? He's gonna be good, he's gonna take some stuff from me, and if he moves on to be an assistant somewhere, he's gonna take some stuff from that coach, or when I transition out here and he gets here, he gets this job, okay? I'm sure he'll be on the telephone talking to different coaches about certain situations, okay? That's just, that's just what this thing is. We, 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 we listen, we learn, and we grow. And that's just, it. you never stop growing. You never stop growing. You never stop wanting to be good. And that's in life or in the sport. It's just, it's just part of it. What about you, Coach? Well, I think, I think it all comes down to mentality. And, and it's kind of what we talked about, you know, whether it's injuries, going through stuff personally, you know, because life is what you make it, no matter what people say, you know. We all go through tough times. We all go through really hard times. We all deal with certain things, and it's, it's how you approach it from a mental, from a mental standpoint. You know, if 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 I if I sit here and I'm like, well, I'm injured, I'm not going to come back the same. This is not going to work. I can't cut. I can't do what I used to do. Well, guess what? If that's what your mindset, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, and maybe there's a small fraction of people that, oh, oh, well, I surprised myself. I did do it. But if you approach the situation as I'm not gonna let this hinder me. I'm, I'm not gonna let this stop me from reaching my goals or reaching our team goals. I'm gonna come back better. I'm gonna come back stronger. And Emily, it's gonna make you work harder. Um, and, and, and you're gonna come back and you're going to be successful. You know, as athletes, we all go through injuries and we all know how the mental aspect is probably the most important aspect to get over. You know, we're all human, so your body is going to recover. Like that, that's just a fact. If you do the right things, physical therapy, you do what your doctor is telling you to do, you're going to recover. But are you going to recover mentally? Um, and, and that's the biggest thing for, for whatever situation. It doesn't necessarily have to be an injury, you know? It could be stuff that you're dealing with personally. It could be handling school, you know what I'm saying? But if you don't approach it the right way, then the chances are you won't come back from it, you know? So that, that would be my whole thing. If, if, you're, if you have the right mentality, I feel like you can get through anything in life. Mm -hmm. I think that's very nice discussion. I was talking to him about that. And because I have, I have a problem in my shoulder since last season, I was, I don't know, I cannot do the same move. And he was, you know, that's all excuse, right? You know, you can't recover, you just gotta keep. <laughs> and I was, yeah, that's true. And it's something that you said right now, it's kind of it's like the face for me. <laughs> just to, because that's the truth. Like, your, your, your body's gonna recover, but like, yeah. and you're gonna be, like, you're gonna work your mobility again, and you're gonna be able to do it again. All right. Just your mind's gonna recover. That's the question. Um, so my next question is, what all basketball means to you guys? Well, it's, is it something that uh, you start doing it because everyone was doing it, or is it because that you just fell in love, or what basketball means to you guys? 
Well, for me, uh, I wasn't in love with basketball, okay? Uh, it's just something that I would do because people in the neighborhood was doing. But, you know, you're looking at a guy right here that I didn't even play basketball as a freshman in high school, okay? Because that wasn't my love. All right, I had other things I, I like to do, um, and basketball wasn't one of them. But if I go back to the conversation early, I wasn't in love with the game of basketball, but I could take a basketball and I could do damage on a basketball court. Okay, and that's just, again, I think I was just gifted, you know, uh, blessed with, with some things that other people had to work at. Uh, but as time went on, now we started getting into this little round ball can take you to a lot of great places, okay? And that, that's, what it, that's what it did for me. Uh, now, once I got to those places, I understood you're not gonna stay at these places long. It's just like in high school, you go four years and then you move on. It's kind of college, you go four years and you move on. You're not gonna stay there. Then my mindset kind of transitioned over to, we talked about this earlier, it's not about the game, it's what the game can be for you. Okay, so for me, my passion and my love for the game of basketball probably didn't grow. And it's funny, until I was like a sophomore in Ohio State. Okay? Now, I liked the game as I started getting older, and I started, you know, people would talk, talk about me, or I'm reading different articles in the newspaper but in high school, but I still just liked it. I, didn't, I wasn't in love with it. Okay, but my, my love probably hit as a sophomore at Ohio State. And a lot of people wouldn't understand or believe that story, but it's, it's the truth. Um, but so again, a lot of people were playing already, like when you started, right? Yeah, they yeah, were already. Yeah. yeah, but see, it's funny, thing, but I, I, had, I had coaches. I had coaches that tried to tell me how good I could be at the game of basketball. That wasn't something that I went to bed at night like a lot of kids do today. Hey, I'm going to I'm be this big basketball player you know, when I get older. No, I had other people tell me that this game could really do wonders for you if you concentrate and get serious and focus on it. Okay, but I had to get to that point. You know, they could just tell me, but I had to get to that point. But I wasn't like the ordinary kid today that's five years old and you ask him what he wants to do and he's gonna tell you he wants to be a, uh, some type of professional athlete. I wasn't that kid, all right? But again, it all went in cycles for me. And again, at the end of the day, I understood what the game could do for me. And the game is still doing for me. And I haven't played since I was 36 years old. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's, it's, the game has done wonders for me. But it wasn't something that I loved when I was growing up. Right, so I, I think the sports and the, the, the game of basketball can bring you really good stuff, but it can also bring you some bad stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, so was there any bad things that basketball uh, brought to you? Any regrets? Yeah, any regrets? Well, if, 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 if I had to do it all over again as a professional, and, and you guys will understand this, being a professional is almost like you have to be super, super selfish. But the word selfish is too strong, but I can't use another word to offset selfish, okay? If I had to do it all over again, I left school, I was always a big time scorer in high school, a big time scorer in college, okay? I would have been more selfish as a professional. Now, people have to understand that even though I averaged maybe 25 points and 14 rebounds as a senior in high school, I still did everything else. You know, I probably led the team in rebounding, I probably led the team in assists. Same thing in Ohio State, okay? My senior year, after 29 points a game, I still was the second, second leader. I was still second on the team in assists. Okay, so I still was able to process the game and do score it, and then process the game and do other things outside of just scoring the basketball. Well, when I got to the pros, I should just focus on scoring the basketball like I knew how to do. Okay, now my career averages, I don't know, 10.5 points a game, okay, which is okay. But at the end of the day, if I was more selfish, that's, that's, I, I should, if, if, if there's any regrets, it would have been just being more selfish. What I believe. Well, well, first, I mean, the game of basketball for me, that has been extremely important. I, I think I would be a completely different person today if it wasn't for, you know, the game of basketball. It's like Coach Hop said, it's given so much to me. Um, I've been able to learn a ton. I've been able to meet a lot of great people, um, especially within the coaching world and everything. 
like that. Uh, but I always tell people, and they're kind of surprised, you know, when I when I tell them this. It's like, you know, I, I love the game of basketball. I loved it at a, a very, very young age, and I still love it to this day. I don't think I'll ever not love basketball, but, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think coaching basketball is, you know, one of my purposes, you know. I think my purpose is, you know, having a positive impact on people's lives um, as much as possible. And I think I do that best through basketball, okay, yeah. through sports, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I, that, that's that's the key thing to me is just being able to help people when I can. Because, I mean, Coach, I talk about it all the time, you know, in today's you know day and age, especially in this area, we don't, you know, we don't really do, do enough, you know, for each other. It's always take, 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 take. What, what can you give me? What can you give me? And it's not enough. Collaboration, it's not enough love, it's not enough, hey, let's do this together, you know, having a positive impact, you know, for, for everybody, because then that will make everything a lot better. But um, yeah, that that's that's just what it comes down to for me. And, and, and I want to do this for a career, don't, don't get me wrong, just because I said, uh, you know, basketball's not my purpose, like, this is what I want to do, because I think this is how I best, you know, help people, you know, and, and that's that's the big thing for me, especially these young, these young student athletes. That's, I mean, I can't stress enough how how important that is, you know. And as far as regrets go, you guys know, I mean, in sports you have to sacrifice a lot if you want to be great. Like, there's there's never been a great player in any sport or anything that didn't have to sacrifice something, you know, to, to be as great as they were. And, and for me, that was, you know, sacrificing time with, with my family, you know, my, my dad, you know, my mom, my grandma, grandpa, my little brother, and everything like that. Um, but it helps when your family understands the goals that you're trying to reach. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't really call it a, a regret, but if it's anything, you know, instead of, you know, maybe, hey, maybe if I wasn't up 2, 3, eight, two or 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, practicing or getting up shots or something like that, um, I, I could have been, you know, with my dad. I could have been with my mom or something. I could have, you know, brought my little brother to the gym or something like that and, and, and created those type of memories. Like I said, I wouldn't really call it a regret, but like, if it's anything that I, you know, that I look back on, like, dang, you know, that that would not be probably be it. But you know, as a as a basketball player, those are just things that you have to do, you know, when you want to when you want to be as good as you can be, you know. So yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It's just like choices that we're gonna make, and it's not really a regret. Like uh, you were talking about impacting people's lives, so. Could you go a little bit more deep on that and like uh, how, how to impact the athletes that you have, that you guys are coaching right now? How to impact their lives, not only as a as a as a basketball player but as a person? You know, how to how to help them uh, be the best version of an athlete and also as a human being? Yeah, well, I believe it just comes down to accountability. Uh, you know, we were talking about leadership and everything like that. That's probably one of the key aspects of being a leader is being able to hold people accountable and not worry about hurting people's feelings and, you know, telling them how, how you see things, you know. So for us as coaching staff, as a coaching staff, we have to be honest with you, with these young men and, and these students that are around us. Because if we pat people on the back all the time, they get out into the real world, as soon as somebody gets on them, how are they going to react? They're going to be like, whoa, whoa, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to you telling me I'm doing something wrong or something like that. So we wouldn't be doing our job as a coaching staff if that's all we did. So we we have to be hard on you. I mean, you guys are players, you know, coaches have to be hard on you, you know. Uh, but I think there has to be a balance, you know. When you do something, when you do something good, we're, we're there to pick you up. But when you do something bad, trust and believe, you know, we're gonna be on you. And, and in my opinion, that's the only way you, that you can be the best player that you can be. If you're around people that are telling you, hey, you need to do this better, or, you know, you did this wrong. You know, because nobody's perfect. You're not going to do everything right. And if you go into that mindset thinking that you know everything, and you kind of touched on it, like like if, if, a, if a high schooler comes out of a, a high school and goes to college, and he's not listening to his college coach, and he thinks he knows everything, chances are he's going to have a short career. You know, and it's really not going to work out. Um, but that that's from a player standpoint, just being the best, you know, athlete that you can be is hold, hold people accountable. Um, and I think it carries over into the real world too, you know, because it's it's much more than having people up. And Coach Hop has guys up in his office all the time. He calls them, you know, once twice a week, you know, to check on them and everything like that. But it's also talking about real world things. You know, hey, what do you want to do? What do you do? You want to play professional basketball? Do you do you do you, do you want to you know be in sales? Do you do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to act? Do you, do you 
What is it that you want to get out of life? How can we help you get you, get you to that point? Uh, because we talk about it all the time. The ball's out bouncing at some point. You know, Coach Hopkins said, you're, you're going to get divorced from your sport sooner or later. What are you going to do when that happens? And that's what we're here to do. So it's just, it's just sitting down and talking to them, making sure that they're doing the right things in the classroom, making sure that they're being respectable people, you know, not, not being knuckleheads and not being disrespectful or anything like that, approaching people the right way, because that alone in life will, will take you so far. You know, just being just being a kind person and having a good heart and having pure intentions, you know, with people. I can't stress enough how, how important that is, and I think we've really gotten away from that. It's like most people build relationships with people because, oh, this – if I'm friends with Coach Hobson, it's gonna benefit me because of this. Instead of being, you know, if I'm friends with Coach Hobson, you know, he's a real good guy, so that's somebody that I wanna be around. That's somebody that I wanna that I wanna grow on. That's somebody that I wanna learn from and everything like that. So like I said before, it's typically it's all take, 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 but now it's just teaching these, this younger generation to not take so much, you know. Just just be genuine, be a genuine person, be kind. Um, and then telling guys to follow their dreams and follow what they love to do. Um, I, I think I can speak for everybody in this room, you know, you want to be able to wake up and feel like you're not working, you know, you want to be able to wake up and feel like, you know, I, I love doing what I do, so at the end of the day, it's us helping those guys, you know, realize that or helping them figure that out, whatever that is, and then us doing our job to, to try our best to make that happen, so. I don't know if you guys agree, but like, this communication that you kind of mentioned, you, you kind of are close to the athletes. You kind of understand them to kind of like a right approach. Right? Yes. Yeah. And that's something that sometimes like I miss here. And I think you guys, if you guys do that, for me, like, I believe it's great. It's like this kind of communication. What's your problems? What do you need to do? What do you want to do? That's for an athlete perspective. Like, you for sure would earn my respect, like, really quick. Like, if you care about me, I'm gonna fight for you. And then that's something, like, really nice that you guys are doing. Yeah, no, I was just gonna mention that because it becomes easier for the player to give more when he's playing mm -hmm. uh, because he knows that the coach cares about, about himself, you know? So, like, uh, it, it's just... It's just kind of automatically, you know, like I'm gonna do for not only for me, but for my team, for the coach that is trusting me, you know, and everything else. So I think that communication uh, makes a huge difference. Um, so, my, so just going kind of deep on that, like how do you guys do that approach? Like how do you talk to the players? Do you talk like with everyone else? Like you said, you kind of call people, mm -hmm. like you know, how, that's how you guys do it? Yeah, like when they go home for the summer. Some of them go home for the summer, some of them will stay here. But what we try to do is we try to make a call once a week to our guys individually just to check on them, you know, see what's going on and that type of thing. Uh, make sure everybody's well, ask about the family. Um, it's just it's just something that needs to be done. Now, me as a person, I think we I inherited some of the guys here, okay? And then some I, we recruited. Right, coach Dupree has been around with the other coaching staff, so he was around the guys that they recruited, okay, and then he's been around the guys that me and him recruited from our staff. It's not always easy, it's not always easy to come in and take somebody else's players and uh, have that kind of relationship with them, but you have to figure it out. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, that's something that I'm trying to get better at. Okay, because when we were coming up, the whole, like you said, you would run through a brick wall if you knew that the coaches cared about you. Guys back in the day were more independent. Coaches back in the day were more independent. Okay, they weren't, you might go over to the house for dinner once a year, whatever the case may be, but it was more like I see my coach if I'm passing his office or I see my coach when I'm on the basketball court. Okay, back in the day. Now things have taken a turn, and that whole relationship piece is needed. Because again, I, hopefully you're not just running through a brick wall for us, and if we're calling you all the time, hopefully you're running through a big brick wall because you love the game of basketball, and you love your sport. Okay, but if we have to go that extra mile to get you or nurse you to feel a certain way or feel good about yourself, which is gonna make you perform better, then that's, that's what we do. That's what we do. But again, we want it to be real. We are, I, don't, I don't want this to be, I don't want to be doing something that I don't want to do, knowing that I don't want to do it. We 
want this to be real because people can tell fake oh, yeah. against real. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, it all makes a good point, but you guys gotta understand, I'm an old school guy. You guys are still young, so my way of doing things was a little different. But now I gotta make the adjustment because I got again, you gotta authenticate this relationship. The only way you're gonna do that is them understand me and me understand them. No, yeah, and I feel like our generation needs a little bit more of that. But everyone is still different, mm-hmm. right? We, we, like, there's some guys that they don't want to talk, they don't want to talk to the coach, mm-hmm. or there's some guys that they want you to come and ask how is their dog doing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just because they feel like uh, it's important, you know, and then you create that sense of, of care. Right, and, right. And, and yeah, no, I think I think that's that's really good. Um, so my, my next question, for a guy, our last question, so I don't, don't want to take too much time, is how you guys define success in not only as a, as a player, not only in basketball, but in life, how you how you measure, how you define success? Me? And it takes some. He writes a deep question. I think that's in the eye of the beholder, okay? Am I successful because I got an NBA championship ring and Charles Barkley is not successful because he don't have a championship ring? Okay, am I, is if Pat Ewing successful because he was the number one pick in 1985 and Dennis was the number one, number three pick in 1987? So it's in the eye of the beholder, okay? So never Google the word success, okay? I never probably looked that up. I can't recall looking that up. So I think that's on the individual. Do you feel successful? Okay, I, I, for me, that question would be hard to answer. I'm gonna to continue to do what I do. I like what I do. I love what I do. Okay, so in my eyes, that makes me feel good. But the word success is, is, a, is a big word. Okay, so that's kind of hard. It's, it's not a hard question to answer, but it's probably something that other people might answer. Yeah, he's successful because he drives a nice car. He's successful because he makes a lot of money. No, that doesn't make you successful. Okay, it's a big picture of success in my eyes. So if you're just doing the right things, just be happy doing what you do and continue to do what you do. Yeah. That's how I would answer your question. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know if I articulated that well enough for you guys to understand. But the word success is yeah. You know, that's no, but it, yeah. Know, people will look at me and say I'm successful. People will look at him saying he's successful. You and you. Okay. But well, how do you feel? So that's how we answer that. We agree with that. I mean, that's why we ask, you know, because we want to hear one this question. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, all different answers. Yeah. Everyone that's has right. their own success. That's right. and just, just because we define success in a different way, that doesn't mean that uh, someone else is, is, is a failure, that's you right. know? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I like that. What about you? Well, I, I think that's a perfect way to, to put it. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all on the individual, what, what the individual feels as, as success. I mean, in simple terms, I mean, everybody, I think everybody would define success as, you know, having a goal and reaching it. Um, but I, I will, you know, because that was such a good explanation, I think people get caught up too much in the success. And how do I say, especially this generation, we'll, we'll look on Instagram, we'll, we'll look on Twitter, we'll look on whatever social media platform, and we'll see somebody that we feel is successful or whatever the case may be. And then that lowers our self-esteem because they don't see all the work or all the failure that went that that that, that person went through to gain that success. We look at it as like, oh, this person's driving a Bentley or this person has a bunch of money or this person has a nice house, and they think it was just like instant success, you know. And it's it's, it's rarely never like that. Um, without failure, there is no success. You know, it's non-existent. So I think people have to look at the struggle. You have to love the struggle. You have to love the, the growth. You have to, you know, you have to love figuring it out, you know, but you have to love the process in order to be successful, you know? Because um, if, if you don't do that, then how can you define success? Because it's, like it's not like a microwavable thing. It's not something that just happens instantly. It, it, it's a journey. It's gonna be a long journey. And then once you reach that success, what do people typically want? I want more. I need, right. I need some. I need something else. I need. Uh, I've reached this goal. What's next? You know, people as humans, we, we rarely ever get you know 
complacent from that aspect, you know? If I make a million dollars, I want 50 million. If I make 50 million, I want 100 million. If I make 100 million, I want a billion. You know, so so where does it stop? You know, where does it where does the success stop? How successful can somebody be? But like Coach said, that's all in the eye of the goal. Just because somebody makes a billion dollars and somebody, you know, does it, what makes them more successful than the other person? You know, so I think people have to look at it, look at it as, you know, whatever whatever it is they want to do. You know, whatever they feel like do. That's it, just like Coach said. But a lot of people don't realize how how hard it is and the hard work that goes into being successful in yeah. the I agree. And uh, Joe Wooden, he talked about about how you should measure success by keeping everything you have. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And basically, like, controlling what, what you can, you know? Not, not giving success as to other people's hands, you know? Mm-hmm. Because, so, uh, I'm famous, so I'm successful. Okay, so when you are not famous, that means that you are not right, successful, right, you right, know? Right, so right. I think uh, it's important for us to, especially for our generation, to to have like clear enough our mind what is success, mm-hmm. and it's important for us to to think of success as something that we can control mm-hmm. and not other people control it. Because well, maybe I have a million dollars and. I get robbed and well, then I'm not successful anymore, mm-hmm. you know, so, but what about every, all the hard work that I, right. that I gave, you know, and I keep giving like, so I think it's, becomes a little easier to become successful once you think that success comes from, from within, you know, so yeah, no, thanks so much for, for sharing that, I really appreciate it. Yeah, especially what you said about like, we see other people, see social media all the time, and you see, you just see the glory, you just see the good things, yeah. and then you think, oh, this guy is always doing something nice, he always has <laughs> something, but you don't know what he's doing like behind you to get there. You have an idea how, how hard it is to, to reach certain places, you know, and everybody's story is different, so how could you ever know, right. you know? But you just can't ever look at somebody and just like, man, I, I want that, you know what I'm saying? Well, would you want it if you knew what I had to do to get it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then a lot of people will be like, eh, it's too hard, I don't want to do it, you yeah. know? No, but yeah, thanks so much for, for taking the time to come here. Yeah. Really appreciate that. And I, I think that that will be a game changer for many people yeah. listening to this was a great talk. Yeah, it was a great talk. So thanks so much. The best of luck for you guys in, in the season. Yeah, we'll be there to, to watch. And yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you guys. Thank you guys for doing this and having this platform. I think you guys are doing a, yeah. a great job, you know, with this. I've been keeping up on, you know, on Instagram with some of the, yeah. the interviews and stuff like that. But you guys are doing a really amazing job. And good luck to you guys as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. 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 I appreciate it. Thank you.